good morning. Welcome back to another Bible Coffee. My name is Travis. Today we are in the middle of quite the predicament with the family of Israel. As Israel or Jacob has been sending the boys, now men, as they've grown up down to Egypt to procure food for the family in the middle of a famine. Today we're in Genesis chapter 43 to see what happens next. Please remember that I'll be reading from the column on the right, the JPS Tanakh translation. The column on the left is the NRSV translation. You are invited to follow along on either side or in your Bibles at home or just listen as we read. But the famine in the land was severe. And when they had eaten up the rations which they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go again and procure some food for us. But Judah said to him, the man warned us, Do not let me see your faces unless your brother is with you. If you will let our brother go with us, then we'll go down and procure food for you. But if you will not let him go, we will not go down. For the man said to us, Do not let me see your faces unless your brother is with you. And Israel said, Why did you serve me so ill as to tell the man that you had another brother? They replied, but the man kept asking about us and our family, saying, Is your father still living? Have you another brother? And we answered him accordingly. How were we to know that he would say, Bring your brother here? Then Judah said to his father Israel, Send the boy in my care, and let us be on our way, that we may live and not die. You and we and our children, I myself will be a surety for him you may hold me responsible. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, I shall stand guilty before you forever. For we could have been down there and back twice if we had not dawdled. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, do this. Take some of the choice products of the land in your baggage and carry them down as a gift for the man, some balm, some honey, gum, ladinum, pistachio nuts, and almonds, and take with you double the money, carrying back with you the money that was replaced in the mouths of your bags. Perhaps it was a mistake. Take your brother too, and go back at once to the man, and may El Shaddai dispose the man to mercy toward you, that he may release to you your other brother as well as Benjamin. As for me, if I am to be bereaved, I shall be bereaved. So the men took that gift, and they took with them double the money, as well as Benjamin. They made their way down to Egypt, where they presented themselves to Pharaoh. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to his house steward, Take the men into the house, slaughter and prepare an animal. For the men will dine with me at noon. The man did as Joseph said, and he brought the men into Joseph's house. But the men were frightened at being brought into Joseph's house. It must be, they thought, because of the money replaced in our bags the first time that we have been brought inside as a pretext to attack us and seize us as slaves with our pack animals. So they went up to Joseph's house steward and spoke to him at the entrance of the house. If you please, my lord, they said, we came down once before to procure food, but when we arrived at the night encampment and opened our bags, there was each one's money in the mouth of his bag, our money in full. So we have brought it back with us, and we have brought down with us other money to procure food. We do not know who put the money in our bags. He replied, All is well with you. Do not be afraid. Your God, the God of your father, must have put treasure in your bags for you. I got your payment. And he brought out Simon to them. Then the man brought the men into Joseph's house. He gave them water to bathe their feet. He provided feed for their ashes. And they laid out their gifts to await Joseph's arrival at noon, for they had heard that they were to dine there. When Joseph came home, they presented to him the gifts that they had brought with them into the house, bowing low before him to the ground. He greeted them, and he said, 
How is your aged father of whom you spoke? Is he still in good health? They replied, It is well with your servant, our father. He is still in good health. And they bowed and made obeisance. Looking about, he saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and asked, Is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke to me? And he went on, May God be gracious to you, my boy. With that, Joseph hurried out. He was overcome with feeling toward his brother. He was on the verge of tears. He went into a room and wept there. Then he washed his face, reappeared, and now in control of himself, gave the order, serve the meal. They served him by himself, and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves. For the Egyptians could not dine with Hebrews, since that would be abhorrent to the Egyptians. As they were seated by his direction from the oldest in the order of his seniority to the youngest in the order of his youth, the men looked at one another in astonishment. Portions were served them from his table, but Benjamin's portion was several times that of anyone else, and they drank their fill with him. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord lives forever. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the famine in the land was severe. The family, they'd gotten their rations from Egypt. They've eaten them all up. Famine's still going on. They're in trouble again. They need some more food in order to keep living. Got to figure out some way to get more food, but they got this predicament because down there in Egypt, the Egyptians, the leader of the Egyptians, this mysterious man they've run into, has been holding on to Simon. They realize they are still in a predicament. And Egypt is the only place they can get food. And here Judah taking the lead. We remember that he had that situation with Tamar a couple chapters back. So maybe he's feeling guilty still. Maybe he wants to right some more wrongs of his past. But whatever the case, he steps up and he says, Don't worry, Pops, we're going to make this happen. We have to go back down there with Benjamin because he asked these questions about him. We can't just go back down to Egypt and not have Benjamin with us or else this is not going to work. Israel reluctantly agrees to send Benjamin, but Israel also, we know he's a deal maker because before of, of how he was so good at making deals, and we think especially about his encountering Esau, of how he buttered up Esau for the welcoming and, and for the, the meeting of Esau so Esau might not be so angry at him. He does the same thing here in preparing the, the, the boys and men to go back down to Egypt. Sends them with a bunch of extra stuff. And then here with another clue about God's presence and what God may be doing here, Israel asks, beckons El Shaddai that the Lord may dispose mercy toward them to release their brother Simon and also to release Benjamin as he was about to go. And, and he just accepts his fate. If I'm to be bereaved, then I'm to be bereaved. If I'm going to grieve, I'm going to grieve. It's life. But we're going to all die if we don't get more food. Meanwhile, Joseph, who they're going back down to see, Joseph, who is waiting on them, Joseph, who knows that they'll have to come back down for food because he knows how long this famine's going to last, Joseph is waiting on them. But Joseph is working on something else, not so much procuring life. Joseph is working on procuring a little vengeance, a little revenge. We may want to call it justice. I don't know. At least that's probably what it was in his mind. Trying to give his brothers a taste of their own medicine. He's already been messing with them so far, making them go back and forth, making them think that he's suspicious of them being spies, making them think that they might end up dead or in slavery. He's messing with them. He's trying to get to them just as they got to him throughout the years. While he's trying to do that, we find God's action, God's movement working back in here because then when he brings him in to eat, he sees Benjamin and he finds that he cannot hold back his emotions. He has to run off and go hide. He's being overwhelmed by the goodness of how good it is to see his family again, no matter what the situation is. So as he's working on procuring some more vengeance to get them to suffer a little bit more. What he's finding out is that God is procuring 
more life for him as God has been doing. What God is doing is starting to overwhelm Joseph. So he had to hide himself and then come back out when he had gotten himself back together. While Joseph was looking to get a little more vengeance, God was procuring too much life for him to be able to hold himself and, and keep himself together as he plays this game with them. God is doing so much more with that. God has been working to bring this family back together. God has been working to bring those, some of the real emotions out. Joseph and these brothers who had been so awful to him are now seated again, at least in the same area, not all sitting together yet because the rules and customs at the time, but all dining and having this good time, everybody having their portion, Benjamin gets double, Joseph loves Benjamin so much, Israel loves Benjamin so much, Benjamin is the youngest, he's the baby, he's also the other child of Rachel, so he's kind of like Israel's uh, stand-in for Joseph and having lost Joseph, or at least he thought he lost Joseph. Thank goodness God is working behind the scenes, and I think God is working behind the scenes in all of our lives and may surprise us at any time in the ways that God is working to bring about lives for us and through us, whether or not we even realize it. We may be bent on our own situations and our own feelings, wanting vengeance or revenge for this or that or, or something else. Meanwhile, God can even take that and spin it around on us and bring us back to the truth, to what's right and good, these guys who were boys who are now men finding an opportunity to reconcile this yearning to see each other this guilt over the past this hope for the future even when the future for them is seeming so hopeless nevertheless going forward and we find god blessing them and god making all of their efforts and their ordeals come out into something much more beautiful we don't have a, a new guess on what this picture is yet Again, this is in the old city of Jerusalem. It is one of the four main parts of Jerusalem. And the four parts of the old city of Jerusalem can look very different from each other, especially this one. So please make your guesses about what part of the old city of Jerusalem that we find this marketplace looking kind of area. Thanks again for being here. It's wonderful to spend this time with you, and it's wonderful to share in the Lord's blessings with you. May the Lord continue blessing you and continue giving you peace.